Um, hi everyone, my name is Gabriella Romeo. I am a 3L at Widener Law Commonwealth and the SBA president. And I am joined today by Anthony Cox. He is an alum of Widener. Um, I'm super excited he's here to chat with us about his time at Widener and his life as an attorney. So if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself, Anthony, and um, tell us where you're from, your undergraduate, and what year did you graduate from Widener? Yeah, my name's uh, Anthony Cox. I am a May 2017 alum of Widener Commonwealth. I uh, grew up in New York, um, relocated to Virginia, and uh, then came up to, to uh, Harrisburg to, to attend Widener. I graduated in May 2017, and since then I've been um, I'm a practicing litigation attorney at uh, Dickie McCamey's uh, Harrisburg office. Awesome. And so what drew you to law school and then specifically, what drew you to Widener Law Commonwealth? So in, in terms of law school, I, I kind of grew up in a, a little bit of an underprivileged area. And um, I really just um, noticed that a lot of people around me weren't as well versed in the law, whether it be different areas, criminal, whether it be landlord, tenant. And so it kind of that's kind of what got me intrigued of wanting to learn more about the law. And so I knew I, I wanted to be a lawyer at some point um, and maybe even eventually a judge. In terms of what drew me to Widener, I think really, um, I initially came from a, a bigger city. Um, I came up to visit. And I think what really drew me was uh, the the family oriented environment there. Um, when I walked into this, from the moment I walked into the uh, the student, the admitted student state to the moment I left, I think I had at least 20 to, uh, people who, who were reaching out to me with open arms. And I think that's what really drew me. I knew that I wanted to be in an environment where people really cared and were, you know, had had uh, energy to want to see me succeed. That's a common theme from anyone that I talk to as an alum and current students that the community at Widener is, it's pretty special. So a lot of people um, stick around because of that. And I think that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And so when you came to law school, you mentioned a little bit of why you wanted to come. Did you have an area of practice that you thought for sure you were going to do? And is that what you ended up doing? So I knew broadly speaking that I wanted to be a trial attorney. Um, I knew that I wanted to be a litigator, um, uh, being in the courtroom. And, and so I, I am doing that. I initially though thought I was going to do crim wanted to do criminal defense. Um, and that's what I initially came in doing. Um, once I started learning more about the civil side, I realized that I liked that piece more um, because it gives me the opportunity to litigate in the courtroom and also do a lot of, a lot of writing briefs and things of that nature. So I am in part doing what I thought I was going to be doing in a sense that I, I knew for sure, I was really firm on, I wanna be a trial attorney. And that's why when I was in law school, I took most, I joined a lot of the organizations and internships that were gonna allow me to, to be groomed into a trial attorney. That's a perfect segue into my next question. I was going to ask um, what organizations you were a member of and how they shaped your experience at Widener and then a follow-up of any internship or externship experiences you had. Yeah, at Widener, I, I did a lot of things. Um, I know the, my first thing I did, I was involved in the Black Law Student Association. I was the president uh, for two years, and that did a lot for me in terms of um, getting to meet a lot of people. Um, I, I, I also was involved in SBA. I was the uh, rep for my class in my third year. Um, I did trial advocacy, um, Honor Society. Um, I really enjoyed that. That really taught me a lot. Um, I mean, I really want to give special kudos to my, my coach at the time was uh, Catherine, Catherine Law. I really learned a lot, um, the rules of evidence and really how they apply. I know in evidence, you learn these rules, but trial ad taught me how to see how they, um, how they apply. I learned how to, how to speak, how to examine witnesses. And I think that helped me transition over into, um, directly into practice. I was also in moot court, on the moot court honor society. I want to also give you know, um, a shout out to my coach there. Professor John, John Coltash, because that was a lot of writing briefs, and that was a really, really, really practical. And I, a lot of what I do is writing briefs, motion for summary judgment, um, briefs on appeal, and so that taught me that. And then I also was involved with um, law review, and that taught really my more attention to detail and editing. So I really think those I was involved in a lot there, and I think they helped uh, teach me a lot of skills. I think I learned how to how to speak, how to be confident, how to write practically. And really how to just see how civil procedure, appellate procedure, evidence, and how those things look um, practically. Do you have any advice for students that are looking to get involved in any of those organizations? Is there something that really 
pushed you over the edge to say, I'm going to try out for moot court or I wanted to be the president of BALSA for this reason? Like what kind of took you, um, led you to that and advice for students that are also thinking of doing the same thing? Yeah, I think what really drew me is that, you know, part of one of the things that can help you succeed in the legal market is how can you separate yourself from your peers? And one of those ways is taking on leadership roles, whether it be stepping up and being a leader of BOSA or SBA um, and, and, and getting on those things. Um, I know for people that want to be trial attorneys, I absolutely think you should uh, consider trial at a moot court um, and even law review. And if, if you, if you for some reason, are in a position where you can't join, compete in the internal competitions at least, um, I had numerous, I know numerous people who that's what they did. I think it just teaches you skills. Um, also, you meet other attorneys, you know, you, you spend a lot, you meet people, like a lot of times that you work, people you work with are attorneys who can help you with jobs. So I think for me, it was the networking opportunities and the practical skills that you're going to learn. And um, a lot of the, the internships and jobs want to see people who are involved, whether it be as a leader or whether it be on an honor society or really any way that you can be involved. So they want to see who you are beyond being a law student. Awesome. And so then to move forward into kind of your, your post Widener experience, what um, did you do after taking the bar? Yeah. So um, initially I, I, I took the bar and I, and I went into, I went right into private practice. Um, I was with a firm, a, a law firm. I ended up transitioning over to the state um, from there because um, I wanted to get some more hands-on litigation experience. One thing about the state, um, is that you, you kind of get thrown in to the fire very quickly um, and you get, get your own caseload and things of that nature. So I really enjoyed that. And then, but I knew I wanted to eventually be back in private practice doing defense work like I'm doing now um, and, 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 that, and I transitioned there. So I, I kind of went right into litigating. Um, you know, when I first started after the bar, I was more, you know, in the, in the, in the office research, writing research memos, kind of doing more of that. Then at the state, I was doing more hearings, a lot more court appearances. And now I'm kind of doing more, um, a, a mixture of both. So um, that's kind of what happened for me right after law school. Can you speak to what your current position is, um, like your title, where you work, um, kind of your day-to-day -day life? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So I, I work at Dickie McCamey and Chill Coat. We're, we're based really up and down the East Coast and even, even, even some parts of the West Coast, but I'm in the Harrisburg office. Our main office is in Pittsburgh. Um, but I'm in the Harrisburg office, so I, I, I work at a smaller office for a larger firm. Um, I'm, I'm a litigation associate attorney, so um, I'm doing mostly um, civil litigation. So if you're in torts classes, I think most of doing a lot of that, tort defense, breach of contract defense. I also do, I'm the chair of the professional licensing practice group here, which is administrative law, and that's um, representing nurses, doctors, um, accountants or whatever before boards when they get in trouble with their license. Um, day to day for me is, is uh, I really feel like I'm in civil procedure uh, <laughs> 5.0 because for me it's um, <laughs> drafting answers to complaints um, or preliminary objections um, to a complaint, which is basically the equivalent to a 12B6 motion, but at the state level. Um, for federal case, I'm doing 12B6 motions um, I'm responding to discovery. I'm writing briefs for motions for summary judgment, arguing um, preliminary objections, arguing 12B6 motions, arguing um, uh, motions for summary judgment, doing depositions, doing hearings, trials. So my day-to-day -day for the most part is like more written litigation. Um, so writing briefs, responding to pleadings, um, coming up with litigation strategy, but I am doing, in, in doing depositions. But um, I also do get to see that practice to get to get out and get to court for our oral arguments, uh, mediations, arbitrations, um, hearings, and even trials. So I, for my day to day kind of varies. Um, sometimes I'm meeting with clients to prepare them for things as well. So I really get to do a lot of different things. But I really, like I said, my job for me, I feel like I'm in um, civil procedure 5.0 just with. <laughs> and with who did you have for civil thing. procedure? Just out of curiosity. What'd you say? What professor did you have for civil procedure? I have Professor Family, and okay. I'm, I think her because uh, she, you know, really helped explore the practical piece of civil procedure. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's, I, I, it was, it, she always stressed how important it was, and I see that in my job because as, as a defense lawyer, that's really how you how you win your cases is is with civil procedure. 
would you say there are any other classes that have really stuck with you that like maybe at the time you're like oh my gosh this class is something and then you're you're a practicing attorney and you're like I get it now this is this is this is where this class is applicable <laughs> absolutely legal methods um I, I had uh, Professor Hemingway and she was great and I and I you know get credit her a lot for me, my writing abilities I think um that class you know I know it seems tedious when you went in law school it's like you're doing all these assignments it's the one class where you have to constantly turn in things as opposed to the other classes where you kind of yeah. <laughs> and so I, I didn't I think I undervalue the importance of it but it's really important you know judges really enjoy good writing and just seeing you know how important writing is I um, mean no matter what kind of law you do you're going to write a lot so that's one I think it's really, really important um, for sure. Absolutely. I always say that a lawyer's greatest skill is, is a written word because anything you do, you're going to write it down first before you have an opportunity to, to say it to somebody. So I definitely see where that comes into play. So you, men you have a lot of facets, it sounds like, in your job. And is there a certain area that you enjoy the most, something that you, when you get to sit down and write or work on, you're like, this is, this is my jam. I really like this. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I really, really like writing briefs, um, you know, and, and doing oral arguments. That's one something I really like. Um, I, I really like that a lot. Um, I also like dealing with a lot of the issues of first impression, like the issues that there isn't much case law on and kind of help framing the law. But I, like I said, I think I, I I like anything really adversarial. So writing the briefs, doing oral arguments, doing he motions arguments, th that's really the stuff that I have the most fun doing so far. That's really neat to have that opportunity of something that's a first impression. You know, you hear about that and you probably you step into a role as an attorney and think like, okay, I'm qualified to do this now. And, and do you ever have moments where you think, oh my gosh, this is real. This is me. I'm doing it when from when you were a first year student sitting in like orientation like oh wow <laughs> what did i get myself into <laughs> i do i do have those moments uh, like i said when i was younger i used to always um really look up to uh two two particular uh, uh prominent lawyers johnny cochran and thurgood marshall and um so when i'm in the court i always have that moment of like wow i feel like i'm i'm really doing what i what i'm doing and particularly when i um go against other more seasoned lawyers who've been doing it lo um, longer. Sometimes you walk into the courtroom or you write a brief in response to an attorney who's been doing this longer than me. You know, I just got out in 2017. So that always reminds me like, wow, I'm really here in the profession and practicing. So I, I do get those moments. And also when um, um, I do a lot of mentoring at Widener and when law students reach out to me, it's like, oh, I have to remind myself, oh, I'm, a, I'm an attorney and I'm you know, really <laughs> on the profession practicing because I always sometimes forget that because I'm not too far removed from yeah. some of the students. So since you did recently graduate, what do you, what was the biggest hurdle for you stepping from an academia to being a practicing attorney? What, like the learning curve, a lot of my friends that recently graduated really mentioned like there's a big learning curve when you step into practice. Is there something that sticks out to you the most and how did you handle it? I, I think the biggest learning curve is, is being, for me, was being able to switch from um, issue to issue so quickly. I mean, you may one day be dealing with um, a negligence issue and the next day I'm dealing with another issue. So it's like being able to quickly do that. Um, also um, in law school, you know, it's, it's it, I, when I came into law school, I thought the purpose was kind of to teach me substance. I thought I was supposed to get out of law school and know how to recite all these laws. And, and that's what I thought the goal was. But then I learned the goal was to teach you a skill, how to think, how to write, how to analyze problems. But in, in practice, you're you are required to know substance. So I think the biggest learning curve for me is, I, I have no I have no idea what this issue is. I've never seen it, and substantively, and so you know it, you have to try to bridge the two together and apply that skill you learn in law school to find the substance. Like you learn in law school how to research, how to analyze cases. So you have to do this. So I think that's the biggest learning curve is like being required to know the substance substantive piece um, once you get out of law school so quickly. Oh my goodness! Oh. So much to look forward to, I suppose, <laughs> for exactly. me anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm assuming you're you're not always an attorney all the time. So what do you like to do outside of work? Do you have a favorite restaurant in Harrisburg? Or you mentioned you're still involved with helping students at Widener. Yeah, so um, I, I love sports. Um, so I'm a big football fan, I go Giants. Um, so I spend a lot of time watching football. I've also you know played some flag football with the uh, um, Harrisburg Young Professionals. Um, that's one of my big things. Um, I, I also really enjoy, you know, being involved in the community. 
um, with my fraternity, uh, Alpha Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and also mentoring. So I do a lot of mentoring at Widener. I help a lot with the, I'm on the alumni, so the alumni board, I'm on the Dean's Diversity Forum. I also help mentor students through um, the Black Law Student Association and other avenues. So I really enjoy mentorship and I, um, I think that's important. So I, I do a lot of mentoring um, for students at Widener and also some students at uh, Harrisburg High. But my, my biggest hobby I would say is probably sports. Um, so anything sports related, I'll do that. Um, I like to, I like to eat. I I don't necessarily have a favorite restaurant in Harrisburg, but I do enjoy going to the uh, Broad Street Market a lot. Oh, I love the Broad Street Market. That's a great place. I um, okay. the little the empanadas from OG's Cucina. I could eat like a dozen of them in one sitting. They're so good, and I love all the different ethnic foods that are represented in one spot. I think it's so awesome. Exactly. It's it's a fun place. It, it's it's still alive during the pandemic, but there before the pandemic when you could go and there are all the tables and people everywhere. Exactly. And it's a, it's a really cool vibe and it's a, it's a neat location in Harrisburg. It's one of my favorite places. Yeah, exactly. So if you weren't a lawyer, what do you think you would be doing? Interesting. That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I, I think if I wasn't a lawyer, um, I, I feel like I'd probably be some kind of educator, um, a professor of some sort. Um, I, I enjoy teaching and like help in, in doing that. So I feel like I'd probably do that. Um, the other thing that I could probably see myself potentially doing is being a counselor, but I think I'd probably be an educator. I think I'd probably teach um, the college or something like that. I think I probably would be would have been a professor, but I never thought about that. Yeah, really good, uh, good thing to think about. Probably, but probably some kind of teacher um, at some level. Do you think you would ever be interested in teaching the law? Yeah, I do. Um, I do. Um, like I said, when I was in um uh, at Widener, I was support uh, academic support fellow for mm -hmm. Professor Hemingway's Legal Methods, and I really enjoyed that when people came to office hours and helped. And I often do workshops and stuff at the school. I think I even have one today. And so I, I do enjoy that a lot and definitely can see myself teaching and uh, potentially being an, ad, an adjunct and maybe even at Widener, but I do enjoy teaching. So I think that would have been what the route I would have went had, had I not chose to become a lawyer. Awesome. It's really nice to hear that you enjoy serving others as much as you do yourself. I think that's really important and noble in a way. Yeah. So do you have any lessons that you've learned from practicing law? Yes, um, I, I think um, I think one thing I've learned is never be discouraged. You're gonna have when you're gonna have times you lose. Um, and I know I know in, I know like you're gonna have times you lose, you're gonna have time judges disagree. Um, that's the one. But I think I think my biggest thing is have fun. You know, I know that like uh, it's being a lawyer is a very and even a law student is a very, you know, stressful and um, high, a high, uh, pay, high, fast paced environment. And so sometimes we kind of get so kind of robotic as lawyers, but have fun, you know, you know, treat it as having fun. That's what I've learned because it can be very stressful in the profession. So I think it's important to have fun with it. Um, so that's my, my other two. And I also, and, and, all, and my third thing is um, build relationships um, with other lawyers because um, they may be how you get, you get work. I know, um, be part of being a lawyer is it's somewhat of a business too. I mean, you got if you're if you're in private practice, some some of the students may end up becoming um, government lawyers. But if you are a, pri a, a private practitioner, you you sometimes have to get clients and interact with clients. So you have to think about that business aspect. And sometimes having relationships with other attorneys, starting with your classmates, I think it is really good for getting work and having resources to help you. Awesome. And so then I think just kind of a fun question to round out our time. What is your what is your most memorable moment from your time at Widener? Yesterday we heard a story of Professor Domino coming to class in a tuxedo, <laughs> and that was a good laugh. <laughs> Do you have any fun moments or um, anything along those lines? Yeah, I think some of the most memorable moments for me were uh, I, I love to too. I I loved doing the the first year uh oral arguments um you know for for and also judging them I, I love those but my most memorable with like a professor would have been um i had professor dean who i believe is since, since retired and he he had moments in class where he would uh really get into his, his trial <laughs> mode and he, you know he kind of get you could tell that he was having a flashback to when he was in trial and i just love seeing 
um, seeing him uh, get into that mode of, of being a trial attorney. I think, and I also Professor Robinette did it as well. I, I always mm -hmm. love seeing the professors um, get into that that mode of like uh, going from um, being a professor to a practitioner. So when they when when they have those kind of moments, I always enjoy those the most. I, I do too. I used to say I would pay good money to see Professor Dean in his prime in a courtroom. Oh yeah, absolutely. On either side, like absolutely. Side, bring, give me some popcorn, sign me up. I'm sitting front row to watch him work his magic because he he was an incredible professor and always an entertaining. You could tell he loved what he what he absolutely. did and teaching and passing that on to students. <laughs> absolutely, I agree with you 100 percent on that. Yes. Oh well, thank you so much for joining me today. It was lovely to get to talk to you and learn a little bit more about you and what you do and how Widener shaped you as a, a young attorney and how you're, you're doing great. And it's so good to hear that from, hear back from our alum and everything. So thank you again. And um, to our viewers, stay tuned. We'll have lots more um, alumni interviews along the way. Excellent, thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs>